prompt-based AI is not taking concept art jobs this year in 2024, and it won't be taking them next year in 2025. Today, I'll be talking about why prompt-based AI is so shite and why it won't be taking any jobs away from us in any significant capacity anytime soon. Also, specifically, why it won't be doing that. But before I get into that, a word from my sponsor. If you're a fan of dark, nostalgic art, then do check out my Etsy store, which sells all kinds of cool dark prints, Masters of the Universe stuff, and Cthulhu stuff, and old pirate ships, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, you can also check out my art station store where I have some tutorials uh, where I'll show you how to make cool pirate skull thumbnails as well as other digital painting tutorials and more will be added soon. So check it out. What prompted this video today is um, something that I saw on Facebook that was very interesting. Um, and I shall share with you that post right now. So this was posted uh, anonymously and it's by an art director who says uh, I am an art director and supervisor for a large studio. Uh, the studio heads had the bright idea before I started to hire... I don't know quite how this sentence works. The studio heads had the bright idea before I started to hire prompters. Several bros were brought in onto the film project. I absolutely hated myself for not quitting on the spot but stuck with it because it's mercenary out there. You have family to feed, etc. And we all know that. Uh, I decided to use this time wisely, treat them as I would any artist that I hired. First round of pictures uh, of a sweeping aerial forest landscape comes through and it's not bad. They submit a ton of work and one or two of the 40 are okay, nearly on brief. So first round feedback goes through and I tell them about the perspective mistakes, colour changes that I want, layers that any map painting would be split into. Within a day, I get five variants. Not changes to the ones I wanted, but variations. Again, uh, a benefit of the doubt, I give them another round of feedback, making it clear. Next day, it's worse. I sit there and patiently paint over, even explaining the steps I would take as a painter. They don't do it. Anomalies start appearing when I say I want to keep the exact image, but with changes. They can't. They simply don't have the eye to see the basic mistakes, so the AI starts to overcompensate. We get people starting to appear in the images. These are obviously holiday snaps. Remove the people. What would you like them changed to? Grass. I just don't want them there. They can't do it. The one that can actually use Photoshop hasn't developed the eye to see his mistakes, ends up getting angry at me for not understanding that he can't make specific changes. The girl whose background was a little for, was a little photography had given me 40 progressively worse images with wilder mistakes every time. This is four days into the project. I'm both pissed about the waste but elated seeing AI fall at the first hurdle. It's not even that the images are unusable. The people making them have no eye for what's wrong, no thicker skin for constructive criticism and feedback, no basic artistic training in perspective and functionality in what they're making. Yes, the hype is going to pump more money into this. They won't go anywhere for a while, but this has been such a glowing perfect moment of watching the fundamental part fail in the face of most simple tasks. All were fired and the company no longer accepts AI prompters as applicants. Your training as an artist will always be the most important part of this process, and it's invaluable. I hope this post gives you a little boost in a dark time. For my ally is the Force, and a powerful ally it is. Life creates it, makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. Luminous beings are we. Not this crude matter. You must feel the force around you. Here, between you, me, the tree, the rock, everywhere. Yes, even between the land and the ship. So I found that absolutely fascinating and uh, a little exciting. However, it's nothing that I didn't already know. Um, I, myself, as I'm sure we've all dabbled, we've all dabbled, and I found that 
it's pretty obvious whenever I spoke to other artists. They've all we've all tried it, um, if for no other reason than to get a bit of reference or something. And we've all realised, oh, this can't do anything like what I need. And then we've concluded, ah, now imagine if this was a brief where we had to give specific instructions to the AI on what it wanted to change. Or imagine if it was an AI prompter doing the same thing. And uh, it's pretty obvious that prompt-based AI is awful at doing work that has a specific brief. And this is something that we should take a lot of great comfort in. Now, I have gone on record saying that uh, I reckon that by the time the games industry recovers and jobs come back, is about the amount of time it will take for AI to start significantly eroding and ruining our lives. However, not all artists' lives are going to be ruined. But let's define whose lives are going to get ruined and who will be the safest for the longest. Now, there are two types of concept artists. There's the art station bros, kind of like myself, who are kind of like the, the short guy with the fancy car who can't really talk to women. But hey, they've got the car. And then there's the actual concept artists, the ones who are just, well, not very popular in art station, don't have much of a social media following because, well, they're too busy making concept art for a living. Now, yes, in 2024, there probably are no jobs and there are many concept artists out there who are just leaving the scene. In fact, I've heard of a few names who have actually quit concept art for good and the lack of jobs and so forth is still a real issue. But again, like I say, when the jobs come back, are there going to be some people who will make the grade and some people who won't? And are you one of them? Some of you may have seen the recent Feng Zhu video where he talked about how uh, AI is just not very good at fulfilling a design brief. And certainly the post that we talked about today also proves that. Um, even a basic thing like a landscape, uh, it can't even do that. Or at least the prompters can't. Let's not call them artists. Let's never call them an AI artist. Okay? Uh, so, f watching that video that he put out, you should all check it out. Very interesting. And it, it gave me it's a, this mixture of hope and despair. Because there are two kinds of artists out there currently, myself being on one in one camp with a foot in the other and there being a distinctly different camp and we have got to the stage and he talks about this as well in his video we've got to the stage in the industry now where it's almost like nobody knows the difference anymore between illustration and concept art it's like in the beginning of the concept art movement it was let's call let's just say that that was 2000 and 10 to 12 I feel like was when it started to really emerge and that was when I got in it really was a blur between illustration and actual concept art you'd see a, a lot of concepts well art of books like art of Assassin's Creed and things like that and um, it just looked like a lot of pretty pictures so we thought I too will make pretty pictures and We've got to the stage now where everybody looks at ArtStation for inspiration and for guidance and all you see on ArtStation is pretty pictures. Those are the ones where we all look at them and we go, oh god that looks so good. And we don't care about necessarily if it's functional or anything like that. It's just a good picture and why not? Why, not? why wouldn't it rise to the top? And we've got to the stage where we just think that's what I need to do because if they're at the top, they're getting the fame and they're getting the jobs, so I too will do what they're doing. But we've massively overlooked something with regards to what the actual concept art industry is. Um, and it's something that I have struggled with for years. And that is the issue of, are you actually a concept artist? Or are you a wannabe who's just an illustrator? So we need to look at that because the fact of the matter is, AI can do illustration and it can beat most of us at illustration it can't fulfill a rigid illustration brief and it certainly can't do concept art yet and i think that there are certain aspects of deep level concept art that it may never do so the question then becomes are you going to do that are you going to do the concept art that it can't do can you do the concept art it, that it can't do 
Um, are we capable of doing that? Uh, because the level of skill required to do that is extremely high and we don't really give it the praise that it deserves because it's not glamorous like the artsy art that we all want to do. Uh, let's take a look at some examples of the kind of art that I mean, the kind of art that is the bread and butter for the concept art industry versus the pretty pictures. So this is the uh, video that came out from Design Cinema with Feng Zhu, episode 110. Uh, what AI cannot do. So we all need to check that out because it's uh, at the very least it's interesting to, to know what AI cannot do. And here are examples that he shows of real concept art because he's got like a design school which I thought had closed down recently. Somebody said it closed down but it only closed temporarily. Um, so I don't know if he's biased because he wants to maintain his design school um, we have issues of the industry not having enough jobs and that's a separate issue but at least let's focus on the AI issue right now and see what examples he's gonna show of classical traditional functional concept art experts to design right this is functional type stuff and it is pretty difficult to do here's another one with some I'm guessing a wind puzzle or some kind with sails, right? Difficult, because you can prompt this stuff to the AI. It's interesting when he goes on to this next item that's been designed here. Students. So here's a camera so here, that you can attach this uh, almost like a Nokia style phone to it. Look at the design execution here, right? How, you know how nowadays you can attach lenses to your iPhone, right? It's pretty much the same kind of concept with the order phone and with this Victorian era kind of camera lens pretty cool look at all these little baby lenses and you know, look at these little lenses that you can put beautiful little design here yeah good luck propping this into the ai you cannot do this okay these things all work and on top of that okay oh check this out look, look at this detail here all these little slide lenses going to these little slots it's beautifully executed design here and this whole thing could also be Put away to this nice case right look at this right look at this area. now i will say that so, this uh, is extremely i mean this is if this is his student work i dread to think what like this student will be in you know years to come uh in terms of how good they are because this is like for me the as good as it gets in terms of concept design uh, prop design it's got everything and um we never think of props. And I, I did a recent project um, when I was working for Terraform where we had to do props and it was the first time I'd ever designed props and it was actually really enjoyable. And what was interesting was we, uh, we, we would share our artwork amongst the team and we would share our environments and then our props and weapons and things like that. And you're always looking for that little bit of praise on your work and you always think ah I've got an environment to do can't wait to show the guys what I've got here and get some praise and you'd show your environment and they go oh yeah this is cool and then you'd show something like just an axe and they'd be like this is amazing and you'd be like what it's just just an axe but like sometimes when you create a small prop it can actually be really rewarding and look really interesting but it's not going to get you those tasty art station likes that we all crave so you have to be prepared for that and this is what we don't want we don't want to create something put it on art station and have it fail because we think that's us failing as an artist but it's really just the fickle nature of the art station viewer just not they just want the juice you see whereas the employer will be wanting the actual functional stuff uh, and there is a big difference between doing your artwork for the art community versus the employer again i will just say that right now not many people are hiring but uh, the big question will always be will they start hiring again and if so when and if so who and that's the big question right so let's just get into some specifics shall we so we've talked about what ai roughly can't do and what the difference between concept art and illustration but let's just look at some concrete examples. AI, what it can do, pretty pictures, we know that. What it can't do, follow a solid brief, because it's not remember. When we say AI, it's not AI doing it, it's AI prompters doing it. And that's a key distinction to make, because it's not just a computer doing it, but there's somebody feeding the information in and 
trying to come up with it on the other side and in the case of a design brief most of them don't have artistic sensibilities in terms of trying to follow that design brief and edit things and correct things and tweak things. So on the illustration front it's covered the sort of illustrations that whereby the client doesn't mind it being random, doesn't mind it being 50% on brief and 50% on off brief. Um, and you know when you pay a, an illustrator sometimes that does happen. You go okay well it's halfway there, that'll do. But when a client needs it to be like 80-90% there, then the, the AI and the AI prompter is not going to be able to do that. Furthermore, we know that it's not going to be able to dissolve a really difficult functional design brief. So let's look at some examples. So here's my portfolio. Um, and so I have to come clean here and admit that I fall in the camp that Feng Zhu was talking about of pretty finished pictures um, to some degree. I mean, all of these are pretty finished pictures. They're not concept art. This might be. Uh, we'll look at my stuff and then we'll look at other people's stuff in a minute. Um, so I have like uh, something that I designed. I don't necessarily have the full design process, but ideally we should be seeing a design process. Uh, there's a, like thumbnails, okay? So there's something. There's um, iterations. So we have this version. This was an early prototype. It then went on to this where I was more happy with it. Uh, and then I have the whole process kind of documented here on uh, on my YouTube channel but it's not it's nowhere near the full concept art process yeah it's hard for me to find something I mean maybe I might have some again some sketches which is still something that is missing in a lot of artists portfolio because they literally go straight into the 3d without doing any 2d at all I mean this isn't even fully 2d this is 3D renders with some Photoshop. But you don't even see that. It's just finished image and that's it. Um, I mean, as an example, this is interesting. This is a live brief from an IP that we all know. And this job here did not require any sketches. I just did them, I sent them early uh, work in progress images of the 3D render. And some clients are okay with that. Uh, this is another situation where AI wouldn't be able to do this uh, or a prompter wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, let's keep moving on. Uh, this, this was a classical environment brief in terms of a natural environment. So started out with this kind of thing, then went into these here, which is completely 2D with some photo textures. And then the client picked this one, I think, and then we moved it to these finished pieces. So there's some design, some design process there. But yeah, there's just not a huge deal within my portfolio of a design process. Um, this was one that I did ages ago. I should do more of this, I think, where I actually did a 2D side view of this boat. And it's a bit crude compared to what I could probably do today. Um, but I think as a, if you wanted a concept art portfolio and do you is the big question um, but that's what we're going to address here in this video so let's just look on the front page of art station and see what is going on here let's maybe check out we can either look at this randomly and see what stands out as either I don't know, let's click on this for example so here we do have some design. We have um, the, the different, I guess, potential compositions followed by a 2D sketch and then some call outs for the materials, reference. So there's some, some things been going on here. Then again, you have to remember that some of these aren't trying to be concept artists like this. Um, maybe but this guy has 2d skills i reckon that he could probably could do that if need be what else have we got this looks like a kit i'm sure this is from daniel dana we can let let him be because he's cool and works for one pixel brush 
One Pixel Brush are interesting, and they sort of set the um, they set the scene really because they don't do much in the way of actual concept art. They do um, they do like a three D environment, like how I work. They show the client, and then they work from there. They don't really do sort of sketchy type stuff. Uh, sometimes you won't even see it. I bet, like in this particular particular brief, I bet that for a official Star Wars IP, I bet there was loads of sketch work that isn't being shown here. Um, I wonder if there's any props. So I'm just going to search for props. Um, see if something comes up there that's got that kind of sort of Feng Zhu level of design in it. Um, it's hard to say because it's just really props. The stuff that Feng Zhu was showing, I might just have to bring that back because that was really, that just had all the best examples really. So let's go through some more of this. It's hard to find these kind of examples. He talks about the Millennium Falcon and how the designer had to design all of this. plane with the like he was talking about how the AI can't match exterior with interior so you have the exterior here and then the interior here this is a great example as well so we have this cool boat I mean this is the sort of thing that really baffles me uh, really it really is the difference the difference between an illustrator and a designer and look at all of this design and my, the question for me is, and the question for you is, is this what you want to do? Uh, I'm not necessarily a huge lover of this kind of design, but then again, if the theme was right, and I do like this kind of theme, I could enjoy this, I think. Uh, it's hard to say, and it's hard to say how this was made, actually. I don't know, is this done in 3D or 2D? I don't no, I'd love to see some high res images of this. It's probably done in 3D with some drawing over the top, but I don't know how it was coloured. That's a bit of a mystery to me. If anybody knows, uh, answer in the comments. Um, and again, a castle with so much intricate detail. It's not like the prettiest render, but it's a, the prettiest design. A nice presentation. And then he goes on to talk about how they worked on Transformers and how the problems that they had to solve in Transformers were very intricate, which an AI could never do. So, and then some visual development stuff um, on a more stylized themes, but there was very specific direction, in intricate direction going on in these scenes that AI wouldn't be able to follow. Things like this. So there's a hell of a lot out there that AI just can't touch. And this th this one here, is it going to show it? Yeah, this piece is just incredible. Like, it almost looks so intricate that AI had to have built it. But at the same time, AI couldn't build it. <laughs> because it's so practical and so precise. AI is quite imprecise. That's just insane. Whoever did that is off the charts. Um, so if you wanted to keep a job, given that jobs come back, then you would want to do this kind of work. And if you really love this kind of work and you're extremely, well, you probably need to go to a class of some kind or a school of some kind or something because it's not easy to just learn this by yourself. Um, but yeah, it's. I think the work could be out there, and this is something that I haven't fully embraced because I don't know that I'm capable of doing this, is the question. And you have to ask yourself, are you capable of doing this? Because it's technical, it's mathematical, it's not, it's not beautiful brushstrokes, which is what a lot of us like to do. And uh, unfortunately, we've got to the stage, unfortunately, we've got to the stage in the industry now where you can, or at least before the big crash, you could and I could get hired as a concept artist when you're not a concept artist. 
and you'll find that you get hired and you don't quite know what to do um, because the design brief is extremely specific and they want to see you hash it out in 2D and I um, I got into trouble a lot I got into trouble a lot of times because I didn't know how to do that and it um, it really showed and I got fired from a lot of jobs and uh, I remember Adam Duff talking about this recently where he got into the games industry by mistake and didn't end up liking it and he felt like a failure and he got fired on a lot of jobs and he had to find his own voice and maybe I'm that kind of artist and maybe I won't make it is the thing. Uh, I'm pretty you know decent when it comes to environments and maybe okay when it comes to props, simple props. But the big question that we need to be asking ourselves is do you want to really be a concept artist? Because the concept art work looks like this. You know, it doesn't really look like... You know, it doesn't really look like this, maybe. It can it can do. You know, if an artist... if a, Sorry, if a client needs an environment like this, maybe. But it's usually... I don't know this usually the sort of work that I would be called in to do is where the environment has already been designed and they want it re visualized uh, maybe there is still work on the table for that if maybe maybe there needs to be new categories of, of artists maybe there's illustrator maybe there's visualizer like you're almost like a, a visualizer like an architectural visualizer but for concept art and, and maybe there is uh, maybe concept art needs to be renamed into a um, technical artist or something along those lines or a, an art technician you know and I think there needs to be a, a redefining of the terms because we're all lost we think that it's all concept art whether you draw a pic a pretty flower or a, a robot or a line drawing of a chair um, or a pirate ship it's all concept art uh, because it's a concept right and it's art so but um, the bottom line is if we are to survive this cull we will have to probably be way better than AI and it's and it didn't really dawn on me until watching that Fang Zhu video um, coupled with that Facebook post it didn't dawn on me just how little AI can do although it seems like it can do a lot um, the actual functional aspect is extremely poor and it will be so for years to come uh, unless it changes so that you can you can physically draw what you want and tell it how to change it uh, currently the prompt the mid journey the prompting is absolutely useless when it comes to concept art really useless and I want everyone to know that and I want the prompters to know it the ones those sort of like sick twisted bitter prompters who hate work and they're lazy and they just think that artists who you know should just suck it up I really want them to know that what they're doing in mid journey is absolute dog shit when it comes to the industry because they don't know the industry I do and other artists do know it and they know <clears throat> just how awful and crap mid journey is when it comes to concept art illustration like I say illustration where you only want to achieve 50% of the brief it's nailed it all and that's a, a sizable chunk that is a sizable chunk of people that will have have to adapt or die so uh, the the future I think is in tightly following a brief and iterations that are carefully functionally accurate so we have to have a really tight control over what we're making and not have it be that here's our idea and then oh uh, I guess this will have to do so in wrapping up I would say that where I stand as of this video which is um, mid to late April 2024 is that I do think that there could be a future for concept artists um, in about two years time whereby if you spend the next two years really studying hardcore concept art and that means not necessarily getting out a pencil but uh, getting this guy out and learning all the intricacies of how pistons work and how everything functions 
basically become an industrial designer. If that's you, and you want to go the extra mile and also get some decent tuition, I think there could be a future job market for the best of those people. And I think maybe the Feng Zhu Design Academy will be the ones kind of doing that because they learn it like pros, like proper Jedi Masters. Um, and what will happen is the rest of us who are just going into Blender and downloading Megascans will just be cold completely. And I think that's what's happening and has happened for a little while those people out there who figured, okay, I'll just download Blender, it's free. I'll use Megascans, it's free. And I will build a portfolio and then start applying for jobs. Um, <clears throat> that's just never gonna happen. Those days are numbered. Um, there was once upon a time in 2022 when art directors were screaming out for artists and that's not gonna happen again that I can see. Um, so minus the, that sort of crazy level of opportunity it's do or die and you you're going to have to become the best of the best and again nothing will come through for a few years but even then when it does it's still going to be uh, a slim um slim pickings in terms of finding jobs there's not going to be a huge abundance of work it's always going to be uh, fighting for that kind of job so you know you're still it's still precarious, there's still no security whatsoever. But for those of you who are desperate and you're just thinking, I have to do this and I, I'm already, you know, you have to be good. You have to be like confident that you're good. And maybe, maybe in two years, the sorts of, if you can get those highly technical concept art jobs, maybe those will be safe from AI. But the other stuff won't be. I don't know how AI is going to evolve in terms of, but it will have to evolve to take very specific instruction or it will not break into those um, mid-tier design briefs. Um, the ones that are not so technical, like an environment brief with a castle or something like that, where you say the castle is the wrong style, I want it to be this or I want to turn the camera. Until AI takes those specific directions, then those jobs will be kind of safe. But the fact is, even if we tossed AI out today, there would still be problems because there's way too many artists and not enough jobs. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so some hope. I think there's some hope. This is like, even though this sounds somewhat bleak, there is this much more hope than I thought there was. But I'm dying to know what you guys think. Uh, hit me up in the comments with anything that you want to say or share or any thoughts. Um, everyone's been really good lately with sharing really cool and interesting information. So uh, thanks for that. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.